So Marion, we have this new special issue of Human Relations. Do you want to explain what we're trying to achieve? Yes, thanks Ray. In this special issue of Human Relations, we're interested in the concept of flexible careers. In particular, we're examining the institutional arrangements, the organisational arrangements and individual characteristics as they occur over the life course. And why do you think it's important that we have a life course approach? Well, the life course gives us an opportunity to have a much more dynamic um, approach to understanding workers and their work-life balance and their careers and as they, as they develop. So it allows us to look at what happens as they enter the workforce, as they interact with organisations and other employees and as they approach retirement. Mm -hmm. And Ray, why do you think we needed to take this approach and re-examine the, the notion of flexible careers? So as you know, when we started to approach this special issue, mm. um, we found many of the theoretical frameworks and the, and the mm. explanatory tools um, lacking in some areas. Yeah. Um, because of the focus of that research itself, but also because of the enormous change we've seen in both work and in the workforce mm. yes. over the last generation. And so that goes to where people work, how they work, the nature of employment contracts on the one hand, but it also goes to issues of who the worker is. Um, yeah. uh, you know, the in massive increase in female labour force participation in many economies mm -hmm. has been a critical driver um, and, and many other changes amongst the workforce. So we feel that the current uh, frameworks that we have don't adequately uh, capture those changes in the magnitude that we've seen them. Ray, should we talk about how we collaborated on this special issue? Well, it was an interesting process, as mm. you know, with both of us at the University of Sydney Business yeah. School and working with uh, Professor Jennifer Tomlinson at Leeds University Business School mm -hmm. and Professor Peter Berg at Michigan State University. That was an interesting process of all of us bringing together our different perspectives and our different research interests. And working across time zones. It certainly did. Okay. So that was very yeah. flexible careers of us. That's yes. right. That's right. Uh, so in a moment, Jenny's going to talk to us mm -hmm. about the literature that we've used uh, in our special issue and also significantly the gaps that we've found. Yeah and then Peter follows up with um, an outline of the model we develop and how that model could be used by other researchers. One of the things we were interested in was how flexibility is written into career theory at the moment so what we noticed is that individuals are very much located as career agents um, and that they are seen as adaptable, flexible individuals um, very much self-fulfilled within a boundaryless context. Um, we took issue with some of that and wanted to emphasize that people experience careers in relation to their individual identity characteristics and occupational identities and that individuals are located within social settings and structures which also inform and shape careers. We also wanted to emphasize the multiple stakeholders and career actors within any given career process. So these would involve, for example, government, state agencies, regulatory bodies, employers, employer organisations, um, as well as individuals and their representatives. And in doing so, what we hoped to achieve was to emphasise more the role of institutions and organisations in um, the career process. We also advocate a life course perspective. We think it's a useful way of getting at structure and agency more so individuals having agency and determining their life course and career set within social relations and social forces at the organisational and institutional level. It's also useful to think about a life course perspective in terms of going beyond thinking about a single life event, career stage or transition point and taking a more holistic account over time. Figure one illustrates the framework that guides our examination of flexible careers in this article. And for us, a flexible career is one that meets the individual's needs and preferences for flexibility and sustainability over the life course. It's influenced by the institutional environment, by organizational factors, as well as career decisions. And we really advocate taking a life course approach to analyzing flexible careers. The thick arrow at the bottom of the figure depicts life course stages and key working life transitions. If you move left to right across the figure, this depicts the passage of time. And we stagger those experiences to emphasize that they're not sequential. They don't necessarily happen in the same order. And they experience, individuals experience these transitions really differently, somewhat based on their social grouping. 
we really stress that individuals are linked through social ties with each other and achieving a flexible career is this interaction between individual career decisions with organizational factors and institutional environments across the life course. So the box above the arrows shows how individual career decisions are influenced by practices they experience within organizations and that those organizational policies and practices are influenced by the broader institutional environment, which in turn influences those practices and career decisions. Uh, the three boxes scan the length of the life course arrow, indicating the individuals are making career choices within this nested structure at each stage or transition of the life course. So the framework provides sort of guidance to researchers as to what are the key variables that affect, affect flexible careers and demonstrates the importance of analyzing these effects at different stages and transitions in the life course. For example, educational institutions may be particularly important early in the life course in that transition from school to work, um, but less so later as one transitions to retirement where uh, organizational policies and practices are likely to have a strong effect in that mid-career section when you're forming a family or dealing with employment risks and opportunities. So the rest of the article then discusses these elements of our framework in more detail. So each of the four papers in our special issue kind of look at careers, career theory, either institutions or organizational contexts and bring in the life course. So Paula McDonald's focuses on the um, career aspirations of young people in Australia. She um, locates class and gender as central in the analysis and also looks at three forms of flexibility, relational, temporal and um, structural. So the second contribution by Chung and, and Van der Horst looks at uh, flexible working time policies at the organizational level. And it looks at the extent to which um, flexible working practices can help women sustain their careers and working hours after the birth of their first child. They look at locational flexibility and schedule flexibility and find that scheduling flexibility in particular is helpful in uh, enabling women to retain hours post maternity. A third contribution is by Gascoigne and Kellyer, who look at reduced workload and time ideals within a professional service context in both the Netherlands and the UK. And while they note that these are quite innovative practices, they note that there are some organisational constraints connected to um, routine uh, expectations of unpredictability and um, the lack of substitutability in resource planning. A final contribution is from Jung and Takanuchi, who look at um, Japanese HR practices within organizational contexts and take a lifespan approach. So they look at how individuals and organizational policies and practices, if you like, co-determine and co-shape career aspirations and success at different points across the life course. So Marion, how do you see our special issue as being useful to other researchers? Mm. Well, I think what we've done in, in this special issue, Ray, and in our introduction, is provided a framework for other researchers for them to look at the totality of flexible careers and make sure that they pay attention to those elements that we think have been missing in the previous research. That is, the combination of the institutional, organisational and individual dynamics and mm -hmm. how they interact across a life course. So hopefully our special issue and our model will be useful for other people to incorporate into their own research agendas. Excellent.